Welcome to episode number two of the Shamrock Rovers save. If you were with me for the last episode, you'd have seen everything that had happened up until the 1st of July, including us opening up an eight point gap in the Irish Premier Division. You'd have also seen we only had £953 in the transfer kitty, which meant that we weren't really going to do any business. And as you can see by the screen above me, we actually didn't sign any players in the entirety of the first season. The only bit of transfer business we did was was to allow Sean Hoare to go out on loan. He went out to St Pat's for £525, so not even a lot of money there. But the one thing we did do was add a mandatory future fee on for £75,000, and that means that even though it's not the most money that we could have got for him probably, we are going to have at least something in the transfer kitty, even if it's just to convert to wages to allow us to buy players in the second season. But... In this episode, we have moved forwards. It's the 8th of November, 2024. That means that the first season is complete. So let's have a roundup of the competitions and see how we have got on. Starting off firstly, in the Irish Premier Division, we have won the league. 15 point gap at the top from St. Pat's. We have played some absolutely fantastic football across the entire season and we were deserved winners of the league. In terms of the Champions League, you might have remembered that we were drawn against Pionic in the first qualifying round. Uh, it didn't go too well in terms of the Champions League. And you can see that because the Europa League is right next to that. But we did manage to get into the Europa League proper. We'll break both of those down in just a second. In terms of the FAI Cup, now this was a competition that I thought we had a real shot of winning. No, turns out I was wrong. We would be knocked out in the first round by Sligo Rovers. In the President Violence Cup, we had already won that at the end of the first episode, so that doesn't change. In terms of the Irish Leinster Senior Cup, the way the season's run, the draw for the next season's Leinster Cup has already been done, and that means that it doesn't display the result of the competition there. But the one way we can do that to show you exactly what happened is if we go into the schedule and filter out some of these competitions, so take everything off. Let's start off with the Champions League then. So drawn against Pionic in the first qualifying round, we'd beat them at 12-1 on aggregate, absolutely smash them home and away. We'd then be drawn against Victoria Pilsen. We would draw 2-2 in the away leg before beating them 1-0 at home. And that put us through to the third qualifying round where we would play Astana unfortunately we would lose the away leg 5-2 and it was quite a disappointing performance before a 3-3 draw at home which was far better from us but it was a case of too little too late so knocked out in the third round of the qualifying pathway however that meant that we would go on and play in the Europa League so let's break down the Europa League and show you what's happening so far so as you might expect a big step up in terms of the the quality we would play so in the qualifying stage to get to the group or the league phase as it is now we would lose the away leg 3-1 and then we would win the home leg 3-1 and we would go through in the penalty shootout winning that overall however once we got into the Europa League proper it was very apparent that we were not ready to be playing at this level of football so firstly we're drawn up against Juventus we got beat 5-1 then we played against Aston Villa away from home we got beat 3-1 at Villa Park we then went to Austria Vienne and we lost 2-1 in fact they came to us sorry so it was a home game against Austria Vienne and we would lose that 2-1 before we did go to Real Sociedad and managed to get a 4-2 victory absolutely fantastic uh, result on the road something that I was not expecting and as you can see we still have two games to go in that Europa League league phase which are Hibernian and Brighton if I show you that quickly we are towards the bottom 27th place at the moment and we have three points from four games quite disappointing really but as I said, we are completely out of our depth, if I'm perfectly honest. Some of the teams that are in this competition, the likes of Atletico Madrid, Rennes, uh, Sociedad, Monaco, Villa, Juventus, Manchester United are in there, Leverkusen, Fiorentina. It's a season too soon to be even trying to compete in any kind of European competition, but it's a building block. At least we have now experienced it and we can take that going forward 
forwards. Looking then at the Leinster Senior Cup, let's just show you that quickly. So, started off against Wexford, where we had a 4-1 victory. We had a 2-0 victory against Dundalk, a 5-0 victory against Bray Wanderers. And then in the final, we would beat St. Pat's 4-1. One. So a brilliant outcome as we win another trophy. So if we tick those off then, it's a league, it's a President of Ireland's Cup and an Irish Leinster Senior Cup, which means we've basically won a treble in our first season. Absolutely fantastic and a brilliant way to open up our account. Europa League could be better, but as I keep saying, we're there probably a season too early, especially in the group phases, and I think we can do better as we go forwards. Looking at the finances then for next season, so somehow the club have managed to dig up £6.8 million as a transfer budget, which is quite impressive considering it was only supposed to be £696,000. Now, the one thing that I think might happen here is we're going to have all this money but we don't have a big enough reputation for a lot of players to join us. So it might be that we convert some of that into wages and try and sign some free transfers, or it might be that we just try and chip away at some budget bargain deals just to try and get players into the club. Looking at the club vision then quickly, a B from the board, our job security is secure. We hit all of the targets that they asked us really, maintain the best youth system, work within the wage budget and grow the reputation of the club. And then maximum one year contract for over 32s that's a big tick be competitive in the champions league so we passed that so it must have meant that it was just the qualifying phase be competitive in the europa league pleased with that considering we got into the league phase and with the premier division we did that in terms of the highlights they are pleased with the 4-2 victory against sociedad pleased with the 1-0 victory against drogida and the board are pleased that the team reached the third qualifying round of the champions league they were concerned though about a 2-1 defeat to austria Vienna. so not really a big deal and from the supporters we get a b overall signing high reputation players i did say we were going to fail that because we can't afford high reputation players and 953 pounds however now we have 6.9 million we might be able to get a few higher reputation players uh, finish above bohemians in the league win at the premier division so we are doing okay in terms of all of those in terms of what they are liking and not liking so pretty much the same thing 3-1 victory against bohemians the 4-2 victory against sociedad 5-2 victory against dundalk they are upset against about the defeat to austria vn and they are disappointed by leon pole's recent performances so leon pole's is going to be one that you will see very shortly might be replaced very very quickly so then there are a few bright sparks across the season let's show you some of those so from our youth intake we managed to snag two players that i think are going to be absolutely fantastic you can see in the top right hand corner it said there this, this is a high potential player his potential ability is a full five stars our bosnian youth intake prodigy saeed jupic can't really decide where his best position is on the pitch we don't play with an attacking midfielder so we've played him up front he has only scored one goal from three Europa League games. He scored two goals from seven league games. So I'm guessing he's not going to be a striker. He does look like he would be better suited if he was to drop back and certainly play for us in this central midfield position. So one to definitely watch out for there. The next one is Naj Razi. He's another player who has come from our youth development system promoted into the first team and one who has really hit the ground running i think he has a good good future a four star potential ability there um in terms of the squad let's have a little look at how it went so goals overall uh rory gaffney our best striker at the club 22 goals and six assists then we have graham burke with 20 goals and 10 assists jack burn 19 goals eight assists watts with 13 goals 10 assists ferrugia with 12 goals and 18 assists further down ronan finn would continue to perform really really well with 16 assists across the season if we look at the best average rating so we can see our best average rater was lee stacy even though he only played two games with a 7.2 average rating from those who have played 30 or more games we have neil ferrugia with a 7.17 rory gaffney with a 7.17 ronan finn with a 7.14 jack burn 7.13 and graham burke with a 
two. If we look at the squad planner to go forward and just see how we are getting on in terms of players. So our assistant manager thinks that our starting 11 should be Matt Kennedy in goal. He's another one, sorry, that I should have shown you with the youth intakers. Another one that is a five-star potential ability. So we've had a really good youth intake. He's a goalkeeper. He's uh, just 16 years old and already has been put in for Europa League games and Premier Division games, which is quite interesting. He's another one that I think is really going to develop. And whilst we can keep him on £30 a week, it looks like we might have to to do that uh, going forwards then a league race Roberto Lopez Daniel Cleary then you got Neil Ferrugia Dylan Watts and Sean Gannon Gary O'Neill Jack Byrne Graham Burke and Rory Gaffney so slightly different to what I probably would have picked but obviously this is the experience side of things and these are the players that are going to be replaced probably long term rather than short term it's quite interesting to see that Matt Kennedy has got himself in in there and they have they obviously don't know where to put Jupic in here either because he's not in here and then you got Razi who's just not in the squad at all there if I was to probably go back to the squad and if we sort it by position so is there anybody else that's lurking that I need to show you so Cody Quigley is another player who's come through the youth development a potential ability of three and a half stars although I don't think he's going to make it like the other two will and then we had Adam Condren who came up from the youth system also as well as on Simi Tembi but I don't think those are players that are really going to make it. So in terms of where we're at, it's really strong start to the season. 89 points won us the league by 15 points. Champions League could have been better. We're going to get another crack at that as soon as the Europa League is finished. And then we move on to the start of our new season, which means that in the next episode, we'll have gone through to July, which means there will be transfers this time and we will introduce new players. In the other competitions, I think there is the possibility that one of these seasons we could win everything that we're playing probably not the Europa League or the Champions League straight away but certainly the other domestic cups are cups and the league we should be winning so everything is building going forward and I really do think that we are going to start putting the building blocks in place certainly with that great youth intake that we have just had and i think we can really really move forward so as i said the next episode will be the first of july in season two and i'll show you exactly how we are building the team Right then, if you're still with me at this point of the video, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Cannot thank you all enough for dropping by, sticking with the channel, supporting the channel. Before you go, don't forget there's other things right here on the channel. We have Let's Plays, Hints, Tips, Tutorials, Wonder Kids, a bit of something for everybody. For this one, I'm going to leave it there. A big thank you for watching. See you on another video very soon.